everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I'm going to be talking about mid-list authors, the mid-list, what this is in publishing, and what it means. This is a term I've thrown around a few times on my channel and I realized, hey, I should probably explain what that is. I needed this explained to me at a certain point in my career and it really illuminated for me kind of the breadth of career options in the publishing industry, the different tiers that exist, and the different career paths essentially and goals and goal structures that you can set for yourself. And that's why I think a mid-list is really important to know about because it makes clear that there isn't only one way to be successful in publishing, that if you don't break out, you aren't doomed, that breaking out and becoming a huge bestseller, becoming an A-list author, a household name, having a movie, that is not the only way to have a long, fruitful, and successful career. So what is the mid-list? It is what it sounds like. The mid-list are the titles that sit in the middle of a publisher's list. These are dependable titles by dependable authors that sell a good amount of copies. They're not selling gangbusters, they're not breaking out. So these aren't big A-list best-selling authors, but they sell steadily. And the publishers like working with these authors and publishing these books because they represent good ROI, return on investment. An author can make a really good career being a mid-list author because their books sell pretty well, not gangbusters, and so publishers are inclined to buy more of their titles. Essentially, not everyone can be a huge big star. You need authors who are still plenty popular. People know their name and they really like their books. They're just not going to be on the Today Show or the New York Times bestseller list. Typically, mid-list authors don't earn huge advances, and so it's good to kind of understand what the mid-list is and then temper your expectations if this is where you end up falling. And honestly, it's not a bad place to fall, because if you're still getting book deals and being published, even if you're not making, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars off your books, you're still being bought and being paid to write books. So the advances are going to be modest, but not like pennies on the dollar, but they're not gonna be astronomically high. And the reason for this is, when you have a more modest advance, it's based on your sales history and kind of the realistic performance of what your publisher knows your titles can do, and they know that they're going to be happy with the sales that they get off of that modest advance that they pay you. So essentially, you're in a much better position to make your publisher happy and keep them happy. I've talked about it before, but it is really worth repeating that there are serious downsides to being paid a ton of money for a book deal. If you're paid half a million dollars for your book, if you severely underperform in sales, all of a sudden you are a failure. It's hard to fail when you receive a modest, reasonable, and realistic advance. And the other advantage of having this modest and reasonable advance that you're going to get as a mid-lister is, you're more likely to earn out. And as you earn out more titles, you get paid royalties. And what this all leads to is just a nice, steady career. And that's the most that most of us could ask for in the publishing industry, continuing to have our books bought, have our books read, and to earn a tidy little income if possible. Now, mid-list authors do typically establish a pretty firm brand for themselves, so they are a really good YA, contemporary YA rom-com writer, and those are the books that they churn out over years and years. They have a small but niche loyal readership who knows who they are and really likes their titles. So a lot of mid-listers become the first port of call for IP projects, like projects that are developed in-house with publishers, as well as in some cases bigger IP, also packaged books. And this is part of the phenomenon of mid-list authors are very dependable. Publishers know that they can turn out a good on target in terms of word count and genre, well-written book on a reasonable timeline that will sell pretty well. So it's a testament to the talent and dependability of a mid-list writer that they do become a go-to in the publishing industry, someone that people know can write a good book. And those are real big pros of being a mid-lister. You are a professional writer with a capital P, capital W. You're an author. You are consistently paid to write books. It's the dream. You're living the dream. And two, you're earning a pretty steady income. All of those books that earn out and start to earn you royalties, that really adds up. This can enable a writer to be an author for 10, 15, 20 plus years in some cases. 
But there are some cons to mid-list, or, or really just kind of pitfalls more to mid-list, because the thing is, it's not like you choose to be a mid-lister. And really, that's one of the cons. One of the cons is there's always this kind of sense of disappointment, because if you're a mid-lister, it means you never broke out. And everyone secretly, well, we want to break out. Who doesn't want to have their book read by tens of thousands of millions of people and make tons of money and etc. so on and so forth? It's the dream for a lot of us, and so there can be some disappointment that comes with being mid-list. And also that indeed, you're probably not a household name if you're mid-list or your name is only known with a certain subset of people. And that can just be kind of depressing. It's kind of those constant feelings in publishing that we experience all the time anyway, even on a good day of imposter syndrome and not fitting in and people not caring about us. So being a mid-lister can just come with a lot of feelings. And then the other con to being a mid-lister is you are always replaceable when you are a mid-lister. And there does tend to be kind of a natural rhythm in terms of the midlist where every so often publishing does kind of refresh their midlist. As new debuts come out and prove to be just very solid sales, they become a part of the midlist and there's only so many people you can literally have in a midlist and it can push out certain writers. So you can't always keep it up forever. But it is what it is. At the end of the day, though, if you're a mid-list writer, you get to write books. You make a steady income, a decent income. You are living the dream. And just because of the way bell curves work, most authors are mid-list authors rather than huge successful breakout authors. So it's good for you to know what they are. And of course, there is something below the mid-list, but that's a far more precarious area that I don't even think there's a specific name attached to. So it's better not to like fail and wash out it's good to sit in the middle and have kind of a good thing going. And also you can leave the mid list by breaking out. It does happen. So that's it. That's a term that you might hear come up in traditional publishing, the mid list. Now you know what it means. Now you know what to expect. If you end up in the mid list as most of us will, basically if you have the privilege to continue publishing and you weren't a huge hit, you're sitting in the mid list. Let me know down below in the comments any questions you have about this topic or anything related to it, like different terms that you hear in publishing that maybe are a little confusing. And give this video a thumbs up if you like it, and I will make more content about the nitty gritty of traditional publishing. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and happy writing.